Hello fellow YouTubers. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday. Um, I had to check the date, October 10th. And uh, it started off to be a very, very warm day. It got up to 28 degrees and we, we had a fair bit of uh, the humidity was up. And uh, but uh, late this afternoon it started to cool down, the southerly change come through. And with the southerly change, boy have we had some rain. It, uh, I put the, uh, the camera outside to record um, the sky, the cloud coming over. But then it started to rain so I had to put it under cover. So you will see one segment is out in the open and the other segment is under the uh, awning. Just out the front here. And uh, it's in um, time lapse. I did put the GoPro camera out later on because I thought I might be able to get some thunder and lightning. But uh, the battery went down and I uh, didn't get much at all, really. There was um, six, over six gigabytes of memory, but there wasn't really much. And a bit of rain and a bit of thunder rumbling, but that was it. So I didn't bother with that. And this is all boring stuff, is it not? I'm just filling you in though, so you can have a look at that footage right now. But yeah, so, and it's still raining, and it looks like I'd say it's going to rain all night. There's a, there's a lot of um, cells moving from the southwest, coming up, 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 up. Uh, it's uh, forecast to rain here for the rest of the week, and a lot of other places as well. But that's okay, you know me, I like the rain. Okay, oh, I just put the computer down the monitor. It's right. Yes. So yes, the um, we had some hail with the first cell that came through, and the wind. Oh, the wind was really strong, and um, it was torrential rain. It put um, 33 mil in the gauge in about 15 minutes. Before it is off, but uh, the hail had me a little bit concerned initially when I heard it. We were my wife and I were having um, a late lunch. Um, in the kitchen and the rain was one thing and then suddenly I could hear the hail on the roof. Boy, well, I went out and had a look and uh, it's only small stuff so that was okay. But there was a lot of it. I didn't get any pictures or anything. So when I came out the back, I didn't get any photos of that either. The fish pond was overflowing and the, um, the water lily had fallen over because it's in a pot fallen over and the pump had fallen over too the uh, what's the name thing the fountain but it's a purified too it purifies the water it's hooked up to a system that's in the ground so that was the uh, it was a bit grubby from the soil from the pot that the lilies in but anyhow that's okay it'll be fine well that's about all I can report to you so I suppose I better do another reading so I will I'll do you another reading. Um, now, if you follow the readings, you'll be up to date with what's going on. Um, but I suppose I could just finish off uh, 
yesterday. I get a problem with the lighting all the time, aren't I? Anyhow, um, but first I'll have to soak up the liquid. And Jesus Christ, Jeremy, why didn't you press a couple of rags onto the mess in the first place? You really started fart asking about doing other things. Isn't it always the way? You plan to do something and then you start fart asking around doing other things and you forget all about it. I do it all the time. He slotted the brush hand into the handle of the dustpan. Set them aside. Then dropped two rags onto the wet stain and patted them down. The dark liquid seeping through in an instant and cold against the palms of his hands. Placing two extra rags then repeating the process. There, done. Now I'll have to clean this bloody lot, he said, grabbing hold of the dustpan and broom. Making his way from the lounge room into the kitchen, he noticed the open door of the microwave. He's not clearly visible from the interior light. Mind like a sieve, he said, gently slapping his forehead with the tips of his left hand. You know, type of thing you do. Yeah. I'll just place the dustpan and broom in the little laundry tub and let the discharge water from the washing machine give it a wash. The tea was still hot when Jeremy removed the mug from the microwave. At least one thing was how it should be on this morning of uh, just another day. He was mindful of his injured tongue as he took his first sip, keeping the liquid to the left in his mouth as best he could. But the cut responded nonetheless. It was only a minor spasm. So Jeremy decided to take in the second sip as he would under normal circumstances, just to gauge the reaction. Funny things you do, isn't it? And it, it is. Funny things you do. And feeling but only an initial short, sharp pain, proceeded to do something he had done so many times in the past poked his tongue into the mug of tea and kept it there for a minute or so to aid the healing process. Oh. If by chance someone happened to see what he was doing, they'd probably think he was a sandwich short of a picnic. <laughs> and if he tried to convince that person that what he was doing was truly beneficial, then they would know for certain he was. Jeremy wasn't sure why it worked, but he suspected it had something to do with the tannum in the tea. After all his surmise, tannum was used to tan hides and dye cloth. So it was reasonable to expect that if the properties of the tannin could treat raw hides and cloth, then it could treat the raw flesh of a minor wound. <laughs> Funny thing, I've done this. I've done that, and uh, it does work. Yeah, it does work. You stick it from in, 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 and then oh, it's, oh, it's smart. It's smart to begin with, but yeah, it works. With his remedial procedure over in his tongue retracted, Jeremy finished his tea. Uh, tipped the dregs into the kitchen sink, then rinsed out his mug and the sink, all but at the same time. Opening the cupboard door below the sink, he found the plastic bottle of hospital grade disinfectant directly behind the plastic bottle of dishwashing fluid. They were standing to the left, his left, uh, of a clear plastic bottle of methylated spirit. They were standing to the left of a clear plastic bottle of window cleaner. Uh, did you follow all that? Behind which was... At first Jeremy thought, and then said, Hell, where would we be or what would we do without plastic? True, too, isn't it? It was basically a statement type question that Jeremy often asked himself concerning a multitude of things. And usually for no other reason than he, like everybody else, was surrounded by an enormous volume of things. The sheer magnitude of which overwhelmed him at times.
But of course it would. Stuff he would think. <laughs> Stuff everywhere. And it didn't matter where one ventured, people always surrounded themselves with stuff, even when camping. Jeremy had taken a two-week holiday during the winter of last year, partly because management had suggested earlier that year that he should consider doing so to clear some of the six weeks still owed him, a sure indication with their respect that something was afoot, but mainly because he wanted to get away from the regiment of work and rat race in general. Jeremy was absolutely at home with the great outdoors. Relishing the isolation of the vast emptiness that Australia offered and the absence of people. Well, most of the time. His wife didn't share the same enthusiasm for camping. Not now, anyway. There'd been a time when they both went away on hunting and fishing trips. But those days had long since passed. She didn't mind at all that he went away by himself. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, she, like Jeremy, thought a brief hiatus from each other was a good thing. Perhaps it makes the heart grow fonder, sort of thing. At least that's what she thought. Jeremy, on the other hand, thought distance was a good mediator and gave him an opportunity to get away from her seemingly constant tirades about one thing or another. And her procrastination with the things she planned to do in and about the house that always ended up with him having to do them. Anyhow, Jeremy had packed his car and travelled to the backwaters of Barandong Dam, some 320 kilometres northwest of Sydney, to a place called Mukurara. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. But that's what it's like. Mook. M O O K E R A W A. Mook. Anyhow, about 40 kilometres southeast of Wellington, New South Wales. He'd visited this particular spot several times in the past and always enjoyed the peace and quiet and the solitude. The huge expanse of fresh water and seemingly endless length of its shore provided four and a half days a week. Mm, yeah. But come Friday afternoon, saw the invasion of the locals, bringing with them all the creature comforts of home. Caravans, camper trailers, massive tents and marquees, for what would be two days and nights of blaring music, for sputtering outboard motors, generators, and the constant din from a myriad of voices, from a congested string of campsites packed so close together it was as if they were all afraid of the isolation and a phobia of our silence. Jeremy couldn't for the life of him understand why they bothered to leave the claustrophobia of suburbia for the equal claustrophobia of an aluminium and canvas can of sardines. sardines. But at night was a sea of such brilliant light that to an uninformed distant observer would look like a close encounter. It just didn't make sense to him. No, no, it doesn't. But of course, it wouldn't. He was always glad for Sunday afternoon with the mass exodus. Leaving him alone, but certainly not lonely. To be able to once again truly relax and enjoy the company of but one. Himself. With the bottle disinfected in hand, Jeremy entered the laundry and placed the bottle atop the lid of the clothes hamper, sitting on the floor to the left of the laundry tub. The dust pan and broom were floating and turning in the eddy of discharged water from the washing machine. So he picked it up, rinsed off the grey water, then took it outside. The heavy rain was now a thing of a not too distant past on this morning of uh, just another day, replaced by a light precipitation. There was barely audible against the patio roof as he leaned the dustpan and broom against the rear wall of the house to the right 
of the bucket to drip dry. The putrid being inside the bucket had all but surrendered to the water. And with what remained, Jeremy was able to easily clear away using the fingers of his left hand, leaving behind a dark grey ring that only time would erase. Emptying the contents of the bucket down the drain, he walked toward the back door, stopping to pick up the towel before entering the laundry and tossing it into the washing machine. When he did, half a wash was good enough for Jeremy. Placing the bucket into the tub, Jeremy poured a generous amount of disinfectant into the bucket. To turn the uncapped bottle to its resting place and began to scrub the bucket with a nail brush. But no sooner had he started, did have an urgent need to relieve himself. But of course he would. <laughs> Dropping the brush to the bottom of the bucket, he swiveled the centre tap directly over the mouth of the bucket. Turned on the cold water. Reached his hands free of the detergent, turned off the tap, noticed he'd forgotten to replace the towel, shook his hands and patted them dry on his shirt as he made his way to the toilet. Jeremy had only expected to urinate, but as he prepared himself to do just that, he suddenly became aware that he needed to sit. I said sit, S-I-T. <laughs> and that's what exactly what Jeremy did. Perhaps if this had been any other morning of just another day, Jeremy would have remembered to put his toilet on hold until he had either stopped the washing machine or removed the bucket from the laundry tub. But the thought just didn't enter his head on this extraordinary morning of just another day. Jeremy did remember the flush before he sat though, knowing that it didn't matter how much toilet paper was placed into the bowl to cover the drop zone, water invariably splashed his anus. Water pass say he didn't care too much about one way or the other. The water urine mixture, that was absolutely unthinkable and so avoidable. Any morning off, just another day. So there he sat, relaxed and carefree as the fibre supplement slowly but surely worked its magic. Sound familiar too? Totally oblivious that the second wash and rinse cycle was only a minute away from discharging a torrent of water into the laundry tub. There had been one way to go. Up. <laughs> Maybe if Jeremy hadn't installed an anti-hammer device some time ago, he would have been alerted by the unmistakable and very loud clunking of the water pipe inside the wall cavity. But now there was no such noise. And by the time Jeremy wiped all, for the first time, the water level had covered half the height of the bucket. And by the time he had finished wiping, the water was cascading, cascading over the bucket rim filling the bucket as he dressed. And by the time Jeremy flushed, washed his hands and made his way to the laundry. Well, you, you know what kind of follow don't you? Oh, yeah. The tub was overflowing. Shit, he yelled. Rushing to the tub. Bastard! He growled, thrusting his right arm into the water. Frantically searching for and finding the bucket handle and instantly lifting the bucket clear of the drain. On what without a doubt was the most unbelievable morning of any morning of just another day. And it wasn't over yet. <laughs> That's, it. That's it my friends. That's enough. Oh, well, the rain not so heavy this time, so I think you don't have any problem hearing me. I did get one comment from my dear friend Dill, who said um, that she found it hard to hear, and I said, did you put your hand to your ears? Put your hands to your ears? But I did that, and the sound of the rain was even louder. <laughs> it's a situation. And, uh, that's about it.
It's um, what's the time? No, it's getting on 8 o'clock. I couldn't record earlier because the rain was really heavy. I mean, it was really, really heavy. I think, say there's every chance it's probably 50 mil or more of rain a day, just over two inches. So I want to thank you uh, uh, for watching and for listening. And uh, until next time. Pardon me. Um, bye for now. <laughs>